Hey everyone, welcome back to the Steamboat Institute's Facebook Live interview series. I'm your host, Erica Anderson, and I'm excited today to be talking with two of our emerging leaders, members of our Emerging Leaders Council, Christina Eastman and Haley Supergan. Thank you ladies for joining me. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Yeah, well, we were supposed to have um, two others with us, but it, we had some technical difficulties and some other things. So we thought we're just gonna make it a girl's call today. Um, so I would love it if each of you could just give us a brief uh, background of who you are, where you work, and sort of just sum up where you are in life right now. So I will toss it to you first, Christina. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Christina Eastman. Um, I'm really excited to be a part of um, Steamboat's Emerging Leaders Council this year. Uh, my full-time job is working in consulting at a fundraising firm called American Philanthropic, um, and our uh, clientele is nonprofits in the um, freedom space and liberty movement, as well as um, some Christian um, organizations. Um, yeah, so uh, we're here to talk to you about leadership program at the Rockies today, and um, I'll kick it over to you, Haley. Yeah, thanks, Christina. Um, so Haley Supergan, I am originally from the St. Louis area, but have been blessed enough to be in the Denver area now, I'm loving Colorado. Um, I work remotely for a conservative and independent-minded women's organization on college campuses called Network of Enlightened Women. Um, I've been doing that for just under a year now, and I absolutely love being able to work in the liberty space like Christina um, and work with women on college campuses. Okay, so one of you can take this question, but could somebody just, exp okay, what we're talking about today is your involvement in the leadership program of the Rockies, um, which is sort of the premier organization out in Colorado um, that really builds um, effective and empowers leaders um, in the political and policy space. But I am not personally that familiar with it. So I would love if one or both of you could give me a little bit of more info about what is this program and why is it um, something you wanted to be involved in? Anybody want to go first? <laughs> yeah, I ran for our uh, class president, so I think she should take this one. Okay, Christina's sure. first, and then Haley okay. can tell us why she wanted to get involved. Yeah, so um, Leadership Program of the Rockies is, um, they identify emerging leaders um, in Colorado and also across the nation um, and put us all together in a cohort of about 65 to 75 people. And we have um, all-day class sessions once a month um, which we learn about um, American founding principles and how to apply them to the problems we're facing today, um, and especially as they pertain to the proper role of government. Um, as a class, we read Atlas Shrugged and Economics in One Lesson, um, and we learn about topics um, such as healthcare, um, the morality of capitalism, all through the lens of American founding principles. Okay, and so why did you want to, or what made you interested in, in checking out the program and applying for it? So um, it's a very action-oriented group of people um, in the leadership program, and it's something I wanted to be a part of since I moved to Colorado um, just over a year ago. Okay, Haley, what uh, drew you to the program? Yeah, um, I actually found out about it reading Heidi Ganahl's book, She Factor, um, mm -hmm. She mentions briefly in in one of the chapters that she, when she was in um, Denver, she joined this, you know, like Liberty Club, she almost described it as. And as I, when I moved out here, I found out that she was talking about leadership program of the Rockies. And I was so excited to meet people like Christina and some of my, my other friends um, that I've met since I moved out here um, had gone through it before. So I was really excited to apply and lucky to be accepted. And I'm just loving learning the, the founding principles, how to apply them in my day to day life, as well as in my work um, and what I believe in politics, what I he read and hear on the news. So, yeah, well, I think and if I'm if I'm not mistaken, and I don't think I am that the Steamboat Institute is actually sort of a product of LPR because Jennifer Schubert Aiken, our founder, went through the program and ultimately found her idea for the Steamboat Institute and was able to develop it there. And that was, you know, over a decade ago. And um, of course, she's been running this thriving organization that we're all a part of since then. And so I think it's really cool to see like the real fruit that comes out of this program. Um, what is it that um, whether it's you or others that go into the program, what is it that people are looking to accomplish by the end of it? What do you hope to gain from being involved with it? So I'll go first, Haley. Um, so 
I feel like I'm better equipped to engage all the people um, I interact with on both on a personal and professional level um, with the ideas of individual liberty um, and, and the proper role of government, which I mentioned before. And so um, I think that's something that I've already had more confidence to be able to do after only a couple months in the program. Okay. How about you, Haley? Yeah, I'd agree. We're around the halfway point now, I think. And I feel like I have, if not doubled, quadrupled my knowledge on founding principles, the the inner workings of local government. Tons of our classmates um, in this year's class are involved in local government, whether they're a vice chair of the local party or they're a city councilman or something along those lines. So there's so many opportunities to learn about how government works, where government should be working, where it shouldn't be involved in the first place. Um, and it really just equips you to take action like what Jennifer Schubert Aiken did with Steamboat Institute. Yeah, I mean, it seems like education is really what's lacking so much in the United States today. I mean, people don't even understand how government works. I mean, I, I feel like we've all seen some of those videos where somebody goes around and says like, you know, how many, uh, uh, you know, members of Congress are there or, you know, who who does, you know, who's in charge of this and who's in charge of that and who's the vice president? Sometimes people don't even know that the answer to that question. Um, and so as you guys are young professionals um, working among people in their early 20s, do you find a lot of that in conversations and online? Like, do you really do you feel that there is a, a lack of education? I definitely think so. I think people really want to be quick to have the right answer. And they there is a lack of understanding of the general rules of government, how it functions, because people just want to join the conversation as quick as possible without doing any research or trying to understand it. It's also not really taught at any level. I took one sort of civics class my entire life going through high school and undergrad and it, the most basic thing we learned was about the founding fathers and then we moved on to other American history. So it's civic education is not taught. And I think putting that back in the classroom and into the education curriculum would make a really big difference in this. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And also I'll just add that I think the sort of 24 hour news cycle that we have um, kind of perpetuates this culture of just reading headlines and, you know, um, reading articles with preconceived notions and just cherry picking um, sort of what you know is already gonna line up with your opinion instead of trying to engage with um, both sides of the aisle on any given issue. Yeah, it's pretty shocking to me that in college, I was not required to take a civics or government course of any kind. I do remember taking one like as a senior in high school, but you know, like you said, I can barely remember basically anything from that class. Um, and it just seems like it should be like, it's like common sense that that should be part of the college experience. Uh, so that's pretty crazy. Uh, so tell us, I know that you guys um, are going to, I, it's, what's the structure of the setup? You go to classes, you have like day long summits and things like that. How does the program work? Yeah, so um, we start, the application process is sort of in August, September. Um, and it involves a written application and then a 15 minute um, in-person interview with a, a panel of um, people on the advisory committee, um, as well as some leadership program staff. And um, the cohort that um, it enters into the program starts classes, uh, monthly classes, as I mentioned, um, starting in October and it goes through um, May. Um, and the culmination of for that, um, year for us is actually going to be the um, retreat that they have. And I'll put a plug in. They um, have tickets available for that now for yeah. um, early admission. Um, and so the class structure is um, like, like Haley and I kind of talked about um, American founding principles, um, proper role of government. And we learn about topics like healthcare and um, morality of capitalism um, all through that kind of American founding principles lens. And so we get to hear from scholars like Yaron Brooks and Tom Cranawitter um, and lots of people in um, different sectors. So um, yeah, anything to add, Haley? <laughs> no, that pretty much covered it. Um, a couple of the interesting things that we get to do as uh, members of the class is presenting to our classmates, whether it's in um, a speech that's part of our curriculum or um, in a really fun opportunity they call Speak Out, which is where you sort of get drilled with a question that you are familiar with. So 
Um, if you are in the financial space, they'll ask you a question based on some kind of financial law that's out there and they make you defend it or um, defend a change for it based on the principles we learn in class. So there's a lot of practical use that we do both with learning in the lectures that we hear and being able to apply it in opportunities that we get. Yeah, I really love that because I think, you know, we obviously stand for certain ideas and we need people that can articulate those ideas in um, persuasive ways. And, you know, one thing I love about the Steamboat Institute is, is that we are so invested in debate and discourse and presenting both sides and having conversations about ideas. I mean, that is, you know, civil discourse is a core of democracy and it seems like it's been sort of, um, being swept away and that's really bad for everyone. Um, and I don't care what side of the aisle you're on. So I think learning those tactics and being able to talk and debate are so important for the future of conservative ideas. So I can see why LPR is such an important program and why it probably has a lot of um, people supporting it in terms of donations and things, because this is, you know, really part of the, the future of our country, you know, really. Um, is building up leaders who can speak to these ideas in a way that is um, persuasive and represents them well. So um, ladies, thank you for sharing uh, your experience with us. Uh, now, if someone wanted to apply for next year, uh, when would that open or do you know how that works? Yeah, I think applications open this summer and um, my advice would be try to go to the retreat. Um, I think it's uh, the first or second week of June that's on their website. Is that in Colorado? Yes, it's at the Broadmoor um, and it's a two day um, event and it would be a really good place to network and kind of meet someone. A big part of the application is also um, it's helpful if you have someone nominate you to participate in the program. Mm. So um, trying to find someone in the network already would be um, my advice. Okay, awesome. All right, ladies. Well, I'm sure we'll hear lots from you again in the future. And both of you have um, blog posts coming out on uh, steamboatinstitute.org this month and hopefully interviews coming up too. Uh, so thanks for giving us a peek into your program. And uh, everyone else, we'll see you next time on Facebook Live. Thank you.